All right, in this video, we're going to be talking to Danny Haddad, offensive coordinator at Bellingham High School in Bellingham, Massachusetts. And Danny's going to walk us through the entry level process to installing RPOs into your offense. So if you're someone that is looking to dabble a little bit with RPOs, this video is going to be for you. We're going to show you how you can take these simple RPO concepts and put them into your spread offense that you already are running. So uh, Danny breaks down the terminology, the fundamentals from post-snap to pre-snap RPOs, and everything that you can just take from a raw perspective and install it into your offense by adding one or two words and one route concept as well. So let's bring it over to Coach Danny, and let's check it out. All right, Coach, we're going to be talking about entry level or simple RPOs that you can install into your offense. Uh, before we actually get going into this, introduce yourself a little bit. Tell, tell the world who you are. Hey, Coach. Uh, I am Coach Danny Haddad. I'm the offensive coordinator at Bellingham High School. Uh, just some things about me. This is my first full year as an offensive coordinator. I got the job right before the COVID season happened. So I've had the spring COVID season plus this fall season as my first full year. Uh, first season in the spring, we averaged around 35 points a game. And then this year in the fall, we averaged right around 21 points a game as well. So some of these, what we're going to be going over today is just some simple RPO concepts that have given me a, some success in my offense that I think will be successful in your offense as well. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is just pull up some huddle film uh, and take a look at different clips that you've come up with and different ways that you can install it into your offense as well. You know, I know obviously we coach on the same staff, got the same last name, but you know, when you took over, it was just how do we get our athletes the ball in space as quick and as efficient as possible while able mm -hmm. to manipulate the defense a little bit. And that's going to be the whole construct of this video here is being able to take what you already have from a spread perspective and then install a little bit of wrinkle uh, into it that then you know any coach watching this can take and make it their own. Right, so just a background of what our program has gone through. So for the past around probably 20 to 30 years, we've been a strictly wing T type of program. We've started to mix in some type of spread offense uh, within the past couple of years, but hasn't been our main go-to for an offensive system. As I got the offensive coordinator job, I wanted to go full-time, up-tempo, hand signals, and pretty much full RPOs with my run game. So this is speaking from experience, going from a wing T team and having some only pretty much only one option with the play and now I wanted to implement more RPO concepts with our run game. Uh, why add RPOs to your playbook? So the main, main reason that I wanted to is just multiple options for one play. Uh, number two, it puts unblocked defenders in conflict. And then two and three kind of go together here, which you can game plan your RPOs around their defense's strengths and weakness. And then number four is we're taking advantage of the space the defense is giving you. So a football field is 53 and a third yards wide, right? So we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of every single space that they're giving the receivers and every single space that they're putting within the box. All right, the first RPO I'm going to be going over is a stick RPO, all right? Stick RPO going off of the inside zone run. All right, so within the box here, we have a traditional inside zone scheme, all right? So pretty much basic rules. If there's a man in your gap, you're going to block him. If there's no man in your gap, you're going to double up to the second level, all right? With a traditional inside zone run, all right, normally we'd be uh, reading this backside defensive end, okay, but with an RPO, with the second level RPO that we implemented into our offense, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be what's called locking the front side, def uh, backside defensive end, okay? So instead of reading this man here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be blocking him, and then we're going to be reading the first backer inside the box. All right, so this is a traditional 4-2-5 look for defense. This is a, a majority of the teams in our, in our league run, so this is what we mainly see. So uh, most of my looks today will be from a 4-2-5 perspective. But just looking from this, a two-high shell, and we see this space that they're giving to us is right underneath here, right underneath the free safety, right in the, uh, right in the alley here, and then right in between the jack and the mic linebacker is where they're giving us a space. All right, so going back to my last screen where we're trying to take advantage of all the space they're giving us and put defenders in conflict right now we're trying to put this mike linebacker in conflict so right now what we have to do we're getting a zone scheme so we're going to see his key in front of him here this guard is going to give him a base block all right he's going to be stepping one-on-one -on -one with this tackle which is going to be giving him a run read so what this mike's going to do with his rules that he's taught most likely from his linebacker coach you're getting a run read you're coming up and filling your a gap so from here, if he's going to come up and fill his A-gap, what the quarterback's going to be doing, reading the first backer in the box, if he comes up, he's going to take the ball after he rides the stomach of the running back and take it and pull it and hit this hitch here. Okay? 
And of course, this is, a, this is a killer for any too high look, right? Because essentially you just don't have enough people to get out there to cover that number three receiver. And that's why you're able to put that inside linebacker in the conflict. Exactly, right? That's what trips matches up really well against with the too high team is that with the trips, you have to pick your numbers and where you want to play them. So if you want to go three over three with the trips, all right, that's fine. You went over the trips, but then you're either susceptible to numbers in the box or you're susceptible to that single receiver backside. So you got to pick your battle where you want to play it. All right, so we just wanted to interrupt for just one quick second. If you like what you're seeing from Coach Danny Haddad, he's been working with myself as well as the Victory team to put together the RPO Bank. And what essentially the RPO Bank is, is a complete directory of RPOs that you can install into your offense. Coach Danny walks through every single RPO and makes it super easy for you to install into your offense. So once you're done watching this video, we highly recommend you check out the RPO Bank. You can find the link right here if you want to bookmark it or it's in the description below. We will also pin it in the comments below as well. So as you're watching this video and you like what you see, be sure to check out the RPO bank. That way you can improve your RPOs and have a complete directory of RPOs that you can install into your offense. Now back to coach. If we do get this too high type of look, what we can do as well is if this Jack ends up playing over number three pre-snap, then what we can do is we can ride and read from the mic to the Jack. Okay, so like our normal stick concept, if we weren't even RPOing it, we read this jack anyway. So if the jack comes in, you hit out. If he goes out, you hit in. So with this stick concept here, once again, quarterback read the mic. If the mic putt puts his feet at all or widens out, that's going to be a give read for the, uh, for the quarterback. All right, we're going to have enough space where we're able to get at least four to five yards there just because of his depth and just because he's hesitating to come down into the box. If he ends up coming up or taking one, two, or three steps forward and comes attacking, you're going to ride the belly, and then you're going to dink and dunk right behind to the Y in the slot area here. And what we're telling these Y receivers here is not to just be a robot, go straight and turn around. He has to find space. All right, the next RPO we're going to be getting into is our glance RPO, all right? So what we do here, especially if your playmakers are at that X and Z position, all right? The stick RPO we just went over was for the most, mostly interior guys, all right? The Y or the H that is going to be shifty and athletic underneath. This one is going to be for your X and Z receivers that are your big playmakers, all right? What we have here is our glance RPO. So what the glance RPO is, is for this example here, we have our Z receiver. What the Z receiver is going to be doing, it's going to be doing a five-step slant slash post pretty much, all right? What we tell our our X and Z receiver is to break on your third outside step and then go find space. All right. Finding space can be a little bit more shallow, can be a little bit deeper, just depending on where this outside backer is. All right. Uh, we have our read instead of the read from last from the stick being the inside backer. Now it's going to be the outside backer or the alley defender. One of the things that you can do is if you get a very aggressive too high safety look and you're getting that aggressive, uh, strong safety coming down hard into the run fit, what we can do is we can really try and promote that that run and try and get him to come up and then dink this glance right behind him. So, so this is one of the this is one of our this is our second scrimmage of the year. So we just implemented this in the fall season. So our quarterback was just getting new to it, just getting new to the different types of throws. Uh, so as we see pre snap, all right, we know that this outside backer here, uh, the one located right on the B here, he is our read our read defender that we want to put in conflict. Okay, so if he ends up coming up into the run fit we know we have a throw read. If he backs up underneath the glance route and underneath the, the glance RPO, then we know the quarterback knows, okay, I have a give read. We have numbers in the box. The beauty about this is nothing changes to the line. The line is still blocking inside zone as inside zone is no matter where it is. They're leaving the defensive end, but the, the defensive end is now taken care of by this wing. All right, the wing steps down for the C gap. Everyone in the box is taken care of because the line and the H alignment as a wing and now what we do is we read the next backer outside of all that in the alley defender, which is going to be this backer out here. All right, this is a second cut up of the glance RPO. So this time we're running it out of a two back set. So like I said in the last clip, we have to have someone blocking that backside C gap defender. So if we look backside here, so uh, towards the white team side over here, uh, we're going to be getting our glance coming from that side. All right, so we have a split zone action coming from our, our H back alignment here. Still going to get inside zone to the right. So once again, nothing is changing for the line of scrimmage. We're going to have a split action here by this H. And we're going to be reading. I'm going to go to the end zone view real quick, okay? So if we see number three here, number three is the alley defender here. 
Okay, so number three is going to be going and coming up hard to the run or takes one, two, three like he does. Bang, he knows, okay, I'm already going to give a throw read. I got to make sure I find a window for this receiver. And I put the ball in space where he's able to catch and run and get yards after catch. Now that we just finished up with Coach Danny Haddad, we recommend you go check out the RPO Bank, which has a ton of content in it that can help improve your RPO game and also help get you started. We'll put the link right above here. We also put it in the description below as well as in the comments below. If you do have any questions whatsoever, be sure to reach out to us on Twitter at Victory Sports or you can check out Coach Danny Haddad at Coach Haddad Jr. Again, if there's any questions, please let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.